All right, this video is on adding and subtracting radicals. Uh, so uh, to add and subtract radicals, it's very similar to adding and subtracting like terms. All right, so let's just look at some examples. Uh, this first example up here has us um, doing 2 times the square root of 3 plus 5 times the square root of 3. Now this is very similar to, say, doing something like, um, everybody knows that those are like terms, and we can add them up and just get 7x. Right, because the variable parts are exactly the same and you just add the coefficients. Well, this is very similar. We're going to call them like radicals. So that's the phrase, like radicals. That means the radical parts, the, the square root of 3 here and the square root of 3 over here, those have to be exactly the same in order to be like radicals. If, for example, this was, say, the square root of 7 and this was the square root of 3, okay, clearly those are not like radicals, so we will not be able to add them up uh, in a nice little fashion. But also, if we have something, say, like the cube root of 3 and the square root of 3 over here, those are also not like radicals. Even though the radicand parts are the same, one's a square root and one would be a cube root, those are not the same and you cannot add them together uh, in, anymore. Okay. So they have to be, the radical parts have to be exactly the same. So we have the square root of 3 and the square root of 3. And then we add them just like we would these over here at these like terms. You add the coefficients. So you have 2 plus 5, and that gives you 7 times the square root of 3. You do not get square root of 6, right? You're not adding the radicand parts. If the radicand parts have to be exactly the same, and then you keep that part and just add the coefficients. Okay? So like radicals, just like adding like terms. So down here on this number 2, We've got 6 times the cube root of 5y minus 4 times the cube root of 5y. Well, the radical parts for both of these um, expressions are exactly the same. So we can add up the coefficients. So 6 minus 4 would be 2. And then we're multiplying that times the cube root of 5y. Right, everybody see that? OK, so that's, that's all nice if the radical parts are exactly the same. So the problem comes in when they're not exactly the same. Take like the square root of 8 minus the square root of 32. Right? So they're not exactly the same, but notice that the square root of 8 and the square root of 32, for that matter, both of those radicals can be simplified. Right? So we should always simplify our radicals right? first before we try to add and subtract them. So like the square root of 8 goes to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 32, remember, remember we look for the largest perfect square that divides into 32. Well, in this case, that'd be 16, and that leaves us 2 there. So the square root of 8 is the same thing as 2 times the square root of 2, and the square root of 32 is the same thing as 4 times the square root of 2. And now we notice that we have like radicals, and so you can go 2 minus 4 and get negative 2 times the square root of 2. Everybody see that? So we, mu we must simplify the radicals and then determine if we can add or subtract them. All right, so let's look at this one down here. 7 times the cube root of 16 uh, minus 2 times the cube root of 128. So again, right off the bat, they don't look like, like radicals. However, neither one of these radicals are simplified. So let's simplify them down first. So this is going to be 7. So since this is a cube root, we're looking for the largest perfect cube that divides into 16, and that would be 8. And don't forget the little 3 there for the cube root, and then times the cube root of 2. Right? Minus 2. What about 128, the largest perfect cube that divides into 128? Well, that'd be 64, and you'd be left with 2. Okay, So then we have um, 7 times 2 times the cube root of 2, because the cube root of 8 just goes down to 2 minus 2 times, uh, what's the cube root of 64, right? That's 4 times the cube root of 2. Everybody with me? Okay, so then this goes to 14 times the cube root of 2 minus 8 times the cube root of 2. You can multiply that 7 and 2 to get 14, and that 2 and 4 there to give you 8. And now we look and we say, hey, we've got like radicals. So how do we add them up? Well, 14 minus 8 gives you 6. So 6 times the cube root of 2 is what this simplifies down to. Everybody see that? Okay, and don't forget, if you don't have these little 3s inside the wedges here for the index, then it's understood to be a square root, and that means something completely different. So you must write the index if it's greater than 2. 
All right, I want to do one more. All right, so square root of 12x cubed plus 3x times the square root of 75x. So um, this time we're going to bring in variables, but all the logic that you have for combining like terms with variables, that they still apply. Right? So the first thing we notice is they're not like radicals to begin with, but they both radicals in this case can be simplified down farther. So we should do that. So the square root of 12x cubed goes to the largest perfect square that divides into 12 is 4, and x cubed here, um, so we need the largest number less than 3 that is divisible by your index 2, right? so that would be x squared. And then what's left over would be 3x. Everybody see that? If you multiply these together, you get 12x cubed. If you don't remember how to do this particular part, then you need to uh, check out that video on simplifying radicals. All right, then we have plus, the 3x is just staying out here. Okay, the square root of 75x. Well, 75, there's a largest perfect square that divides into 75. That would be 25. x, since the exponent here is less than the index, there's nothing you can do with it. So it's just going to go over here. 25 times 3 gives you 75. The x part goes over here. So then the next line, we would simplify each of these square roots that are perfect squares. So this would go to the square root of 4x squared goes to 2x. All that's multiplied times the square root of 3x plus 3, this 3x. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 3x is 3x. So, to do one more line here, this would be 15x square root of 3x. I forgot my x. And then we say, all right, we've got like radicals. They both have the square root of 3x in them. So now the question is, can we combine the coefficients in front? Well, you have a 2x and a 15x. Yes, that indeed goes to 17x, because 2x plus 15x is 17x, and then times the square root of 3x. All right, so notice here that we've got the 2x plus the 15x. We also still need to be able to add them. So what I mean is, um, we've got like radicals here, uh, but we also, since the, the coefficients there are um, have variables with them, the 2x and the 15x, in order to add those, they have to be like terms as well. For example, if this x wasn't here and we just had 2 times the square root of 3x, then we would be done at this line because we wouldn't be able to add the 2 and the 15x together, right, because they're not like terms. So all those rules still apply, uh, and, they, and they will come into play. All right? All right, that's about it. So uh, practice adding and subtracting um, radicals. Make sure to simplify them first if you need to. And that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.